Hi everyone, this is our channel, Meet the Real Story. Please, like, share and subscribe. My name is Ricardo. Though I am a 21-year-old, my body is the size of a 10-year-old boy because I was born with a disease called Prader-Willi Syndrome, PWS, which stunted my body growth while allowing my mind to continue developing. Most people would consider PWS to be a curse, but it was a gift for Dad and me because we took advantage of this situation. My story starts when Dad's company accused him of embezzlement and fired him. The scandal and shame of this incident kept him from getting any other type of work, so we left our country to start a new life elsewhere. Dad was still unable to get a job because his old company always gave him bad references when called by prospective new employers. Dad was worried about our future, so he improvised and came up with a scheme to turn me into the goose that laid the golden egg. You see, children always bullied me due to my small body size. Luckily, my mature mind helped me avoid fights most of the time. One day, Dad asked me if I wanted to become famous, and I said, sure. He told me that we needed a way to gain people's sympathy, and he explained his plan. We went to the garage and found some old torn clothes that he asked me to wear. Then he poured dirty water on me. Then he made a recording of me crying and explaining that I had been beaten by some bullies in our neighborhood. After we finished making our sympathy garnering video, he applauded my performance and posted it to the internet to see what reaction we would get. The next day, our video went viral and I became an instant celebrity. All the news agencies gave the video broad coverage and I began receiving sympathetic phone calls and donations from around the world. Several international schools offered me free scholarships at their schools, and I managed to amass a good size of money from all the donations and, for a moment, I thought our days of poverty were finally over. Unfortunately, the authorities investigated my background and found that I was 21 years old and not really a kid at all. Then, all my fortunes reversed themselves, and the police came after me for fraud. I am speaking to you now from a hotel room as I hide from the police. I have enough money to head to another country, preferably one that has no extradition treaty with my country. I have enough money to live comfortably without needing to work for the rest of my life. So, on balance, I don't have any regrets about what I've done. Hey, my name is Rachel. In high school, the homecoming dance was coming up. I happened to confine that I had a crush on a popular guy to another girl in my class. Unbeknownst to me, they were very, very good friends, and this girl offered to put in a good word for me. The next day, she told me my crush would totally say yes if I asked him. So in between periods, I found my crush in the hallway, asked him to the homecoming dance, and he said yes. Well, homecoming is on Saturday. Today is Thursday. My crush, his friend, and I, we went to lunch together and I offered to pay in the hopes that this will make them like me even more. And yes, I was that bad. They tell me they want two bags of chips, burgers, fries, and two small cartons of chocolate milk? No problem. I go to the cafeteria and get those items like a boss. For some reason, I decided to jog over to them, even though that really only shaves off like, what, 10 minutes from my trip? but I still did it. I had two bags of chips in my mouth, one in my hand with a burger and fries, the other hand with two cartons of chocolate milk. They are sitting in the common area. The common area is carpeted, parallel to the cafeteria which had a tile floor. These rooms are separated by a relatively small metal line on the floor, and as I meet that line, my left foot catches on the metal. No problem, I have another foot. I will just swing that foot forward real quick and save this. But no, the other foot also catches. As I fall straight forward, I try to catch myself with my hands. Well, one hand had the chocolate milk in it, which just burst out, sending chocolate milk in every single direction. My other hand didn't help me either. It slipped on the burger in the bag and the fries go all over the place. The last thing to break my fall was actually my own face. The face with two bags of potato chips in my mouth. 
You know those jokes about chips bags being full of air? Well, they're actually true. As my face collided with the ground, both the bags of chips exploded at the same exact time and it sounded like a gunshot. Somehow one of my shoes just flew off. I tried to melt into the ground and fade out of existence for a moment and this happened at the meeting point of the common room and the cafeteria. So everyone in both rooms either saw or heard this fiasco and looked over. About a hundred students. It's deadly silent for a couple of seconds and then comes the laughter. And dear god the laughter. It was like a jet engine. Every person there was laughing the hardest they have ever laughed in their whole lives. I even saw the janitor doubled over laughing, bracing himself with a mop handle. A teacher was trying to walk over to help me, but she stopped every couple of feet to use her whole body to laugh at me. All of this happens not 10 feet away from the table in which my crush and his friends were sitting. Everyone is having a great laugh, but my crush has the greatest laugh of all. He has fallen to the ground, with one hand bracing himself on his knees, the other hand is clutched at his ribs as he laughs so hard that no sound comes out. He was wheezing like a dolphin. There is no recovery from this. I walk to the bathroom to clean myself up. The teacher could only manage to hand me my shoe along the way and continue laughing. In the bathroom, the laughter did not die at all for what seemed like a lifetime. When the bell rang, I was still in the bathroom and people were still laughing. While I spent the whole day wallowing in easily the most embarrassing moment of my life, I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'm just a funny girl and he will like it. The next morning, I see my crush before class and he walks up to me and he says, So homecoming is tomorrow. Eager not to speak about the shit show that happened yesterday, I just excitedly said, Yes, yes it is. And then he delivers a crisp and says, Um, so this girl that I actually like asked me to go to the dance with her, so I think I'm gonna go. To which I replied, Um, ah, yeah, that makes sense. I totally did not go in the bathroom and cry after that. Anyways. My crush said he will go to homecoming with me. The day before, I tripped with his lunch and face planted into a pool of random ingredients in front of the entire class. My crush did not go to the homecoming dance with me. I adore detective adventures and solving puzzles that others can't. I'm crazy about this. I love challenges and mysteries. I'm Ramon, but my father's nickname for me is Megamind. I'm 14 years old, and I'm typically ranked number one in my class every year. I have become famous for solving riddles. Many comers have tried to unseat me, but all have failed. I love to examine minute details. But let me get on with telling you my story. One hot summer, we had just finished our exams at school and were going on summer break. So I organized a trip to the beach with my friends. Beach weather is amazing. Clear skies, cool ocean breezes, sand, and sun. Just amazing. One day, before my beach trip, my mother handed me a letter from my grandmother. I was surprised and thought it was a little weird because Granny owned a hotel in the surrounding area nearby. It had wonderful views all around it. I had opened the letter, which read, Dear Ramon, How are you? I hope you're enjoying your summer break. Would you mind spending a couple of days with me? I have a serious matter that I would like to discuss with you. Granny. Initially, I thought that it was probably some silly matter, but then my inner voice told me that it might be important. I was conflicted between going on my beach trip or visiting my granny. I decided to visit granny first. She was family after all. So off I went. Though my grandmother lived in a beautiful area, the closer I got to the hotel, the more my inner voice was nagging me. When I arrived at the hotel, Granny was waiting for me. She smiled and hugged me. I had missed her so much. She had company. Raul, her maintenance man, and Malika, her housekeeper and assistant. There weren't any guests in the hotel at the time, and I asked her why. Her face changed, and she said that was what she wanted to speak to me about. 
so we went to her room to talk. She then proceeded to tell me that the hotel was haunted. Haunted? I exclaimed. What makes you think that? Granny said, the hotel has evil spirits that frighten the guests at night. I didn't want to believe it, but I knew Granny was a rational person. I suspected there was more to this than meets the eye, so I decided to investigate this intriguing mystery. On my first night at the hotel, I waited until midnight. Then I lit a candle and walked through the halls of the hotel. There were photos on the wall and I could hear whispering and the rustle of the leaves outside. It was a little spooky and unsettling and made my blood run cold. Suddenly, I heard laughing on both sides of the hotel and a shadow passed quickly in front of my eyes. Unnerved, I quickly returned to my room where soon afterwards I heard something scratching on my door. I kept thinking to myself, I am not afraid. I am not afraid. Then the door began opening slowly. I saw a hand on the doorknob. Then the owner of the hand came into view. It was a cloaked, headless man holding a candle. I fainted. The next day, I woke up to find Granny and Malika standing beside me. Granny told me that I had been sleeping a long time. I asked what had happened and they told me they heard me scream and came to my aid. When they found me, I was unconscious on the floor. At that moment, there was a knock on the door. It was Raul bringing me a drink. That was when I noticed something strange about Raul's face. It was emotionless. Then I glanced at his hands as I accepted the drink from him. That night, I again walked around the hotel. I found some steps at the end of a corridor that led to the basement. Down in the basement, I opened a maintenance door and found a tape recorder and a pile of clothes on a table. Suddenly the lights went out. I was groping around in the dark and trying to find my way back when I heard the laughing again. Still, I continued stumbling ahead through the dark. I stepped on an electrical line and tore it off the wall. I returned to my room. My door opened slowly. I was hiding behind the door. I grabbed the loose electrical detonator and touched it to the doorknob. It was live, and I heard a grunt from the owner of the hand on the other side of the door as he or she was shocked, and I heard him or her fall to the floor. It took me a while to find the electrical panel, but I managed to get the lights back on. When I did, I found Raul laying unconscious on the floor next to the doorknob that I had electrified. I called Granny and Malika down to the basement. Granny asked what had happened. I replied, Granny, you really need to screen your employees better. Raul was your ghost. Granny looked shocked and asked me what made me think that. I explained that the hand on my drink today was the same hand I saw on the headless ghost that opened my hotel room door the night before. I also found tools, a tape recorder, and some ghost clothes down here in the basement. In addition, I found the earphones that had been placed around the hotel. Granny was shocked. Raul woke up about that time, and she grilled Raul. Why are you scaring all my guests away, Raul? He said, This hotel used to belong to my family, but you bought it from my grandfather. Well, I wanted it back. Please forgive me. Malika said, We have to call the police. But I said, No, wait. I have an idea. Let's renovate and reopen the hotel with a new name. The Haunted Hotel. Our advertising slogan will be, Spend a night in a haunted hotel. Raul can do his ghost thing with the whispers and the laughing. Why, he can even flicker the lights off and on at a random time once or twice a night just to give the hotel a spooky atmosphere. The idea proved to be a big hit. The haunted hotel attracted many tourists and Granny's business prospered. I had a nice holiday and still managed to fit in my trip to the beach on my summer break.